Hello and welcome to this special bonus episode of the Press Start Podcast, Press Start Australia's weekly video game discussion podcast, brought to you today by SteelSeries and their new range of alias microphones. Big shout out SteelSeries again for providing us with these mics made for gamers, enabling a show like ours to happen. I'm your host, you and joined today by my fellow gamers and co-hosts, Shannon. Hello. Kieran. Hello. And James. Hello. We've gotten together today to discuss the Game Awards, which wrapped up just in the last hour as of recording. James has had just enough time to have his shower and squeeze in a quick skincare routine. Please, we could make that happen for you, James. Uh, today, I'm eager flowing. to discuss. <laughs> today, I'm I don't eager have many dis- demands, but they're simple. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm eager to discuss the winners and the announcements, but first let's discuss overall impressions. Um, and without getting too into the weeds of the winners and the announcements that obviously featured in the award ceremony, Shannon, what were your overall impressions of the show? Very long, three and a half hours <laughs> or whatever it was. Three. Is that including the how. pre-show? Is that? I don't even it know. It did I feel think like so. three day. and a half hours, but yeah, it felt like a long time. It I did, thought it was going to be short. I think short it started and... late though. Yeah, potentially, so, but I, don't, I think that's I feel like it was thirty minutes late. It? No, I'm not. I'm not saying it is. I never claim that. But um, uh, anyway, it was continue. long. I don't know how long it was, but it was long. It was a lot of games. Um, a lot of good games, but yeah, it, it did feel like there was a lot of similar looking games and a lot of ads mm. um, that sort of, again, took away from... Yeah, we sort of commented of on that as we were like texting each other throughout the show that you had like similar looking games kind of like sandwiched in right next to each other and one of them would be like introduced by the dev and then it would just like throw to the next trailer thereafter and it was yeah. like, is this like... Uh, made by the same people yeah, did, did, there, is this a different there game was like what is going on a lot of lengthy introductions as well like the um yeah what's the magic mic case matthew mcconaughey one where he introduced <laughs> a game that looked cool but like it wasn't it was from a new dev and a new franchise so it was like i don't know there was just stuff like that where it felt was he in that loaded. game allegedly yes right okay he is okay so there was some reason as to why he was introducing it yeah uh, what about yourself, James? How did you feel about it overall? <clears throat> um, yeah, it was good. I feel like we're... I don't know. I don't know if... Every time we talk about these things, I'm never, like, amazed anymore. But then, I don't know if that's just me or, like, hmm. if this is just what they're like now. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I remember, like, you know... I think I think it was good. Like, I, I was... Like I said to you guys, like, I wasn't... Like, I'm, I, I wasn't disappointed, but I wasn't, like, excited... But I wasn't bored. But I was. I don't know. Like it was a weird. Like <laughs> you were like, like conscious about there's... how long it was, but maybe you didn't feel totally disinterested. Yeah. That, like, like normally I get kind of I normally felt. I get like physically uncomfortable. Like I've been sitting I, down for so long. I feel long, like that's because they're always that. normally at like three a.m. Though, and this was at least like Australian yeah. daytime. So like the fatigue. Yeah, part maybe didn't that's why. In. No. Yeah. I don't know. Very disruptive. I think it was. I think it was. Though. I think it was fine. I just don't think there was any like. Whoa kind of moments you know yeah yeah i didn't say whoa i like, think it's so way. hard to put like a show like this together and kind of appeal to everyone and i know the musical numbers don't do a lot for people but i mm. love them um mm. and particularly this year with like the alan wake piece and then the medley that, that like i cool. really enjoyed the, that. the one that kind of annoyed me was the hellblade one where it was like a five minute yeah. symphony one and then they showed gameplay and it was like why didn't you just have that playing in the theater while that trailer was playing and like the people in the theater could have enjoyed yeah. that and we could have yeah. enjoyed the two overlaid like i didn't need both of those things and then no release date at the end of it yeah yeah no specific release date annoyingly still um yeah it's it's funny because like i know Akili kind of actively avoids a comparison to to the oscars or like the emmys or the grammys like one of those kind of other big media awards nights um but i feel like it is very similar to the oscars in the regard of like having the musical numbers in there Mm. um i guess the grammys obviously does that as well um but like it kind of tries to do so many things and it's it unavoidable that it's a bit of a hodgepodge and i feel like this year we were all commenting it throughout as well right that the awards kind of felt like they took a bit of a back seat and you had like pretty major awards categories just read out in like quick succession um which felt a bit 
jarring i don't remember it feeling like that before that they were just kind of rattled through but they kind of very much took a bit of a backseat this year i thought but anyhow that's my two cents kieran how did you feel about the ceremony overall yeah i mean my experience of it was a bit disjointed because i was like back and forth trying to report on everything um yeah but even like even in doing that like what you're saying is right like so many of the awards were like smushed together so many of the announcements were smushed together and then there was just big stretches of nothing in between them where it was Mm. like an ad or you know some lengthy introduction or a speech that they were desperately trying to play off like I i feel like the pacing was definitely off but i overall like the announcements were cool there was some big stuff and there was some things that'll probably get forgotten about in six months time um <laughs> but like I, I i wouldn't say i was disappointed with it overall yeah i'm honestly looking forward to going through all of the announcements again with you all because i feel like a lot of it did come at you pretty fast and there's stuff in there that i'm already like feeling i'm forgetting about um but before we discuss the announcements a bit further we would be amiss not to talk about the award winners it is after all i guess like the reason this happens is to award some of the best games of the year and in the lead up to this we've spoken a lot about like how hotly contested we thought this year was going to be and whether or not the games that we are personal fans of would kind of get the recognition we felt they deserved um to that effect james do you feel like the games you wanted to see get recognized and win the awards you wanted to manage to do so this evening slash afternoon in australia <laughs> mm. um yeah <laughs> i think it was I think it was all right. I, I, yeah, I like obviously Alan Wake did pretty well, which I'm pretty happy about. Um, don't know about Game of the Year, but I, I, I generally, I generally think everything was pretty good. I, I don't know if you had this to. No, you don't. Um, I, I kind of felt like the awards were very glossed over. Like I actually just had to go and look them up. Like I know obviously Game yeah. of the Year was given a little bit of time, and I think Games for Impact was given time on the stage, but a lot of them were just like kind of rushed through. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I. I mean, I like quickly scrolling. I think it's like it's a pretty good outcome. Absolutely. Um, the, I, yeah. I don't know. I know people say that, but I don't hate that only because like, how many people do we actually like know of? Like, it's so different for music and movie awards because like you're. No, I agree, but, I, but I'm not saying I'm not yeah. saying it like I'm not saying it like that. What I genuinely feel this year, especially like they definitely glossed over more awards than they normally do. Yeah, probably. Um, in the previous years like i kind of had an idea and, and like i, I cover them the same get... way every year so yeah. it's nothing like that like and i just you know this is one of the few opportunities you actually get like to in like see developers up on stage and kind of hear from the people themselves that make the game so it does kind of feel like a bit of a missed opportunity like i know you say it's not like adele is getting up on stage and you get like a glimpse at her life like i get that but like this is an opportunity to kind of see some game directors or whatever, kind of like an and art director kind of get up on stage to, like, and get up in front of the world and like be like, thanks. Scrolling yes. through the list, you know, though, like I feel like know. there are a lot of games that represent like Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate won like a lot of the major awards. Like obviously yeah. we did gloss over quite a few, but um, yeah, there's, yeah. I don't know. I, also, I get what I, you're now saying. That we're- I've less ads. I'd be just I'll be into, more less ads and more award. It time. has just popped into my head though. Maybe like they did do that less of that, so there's less people going up up on stage and off stage, so that's more control. That Maybe that was something as well. Did it? you think the pins that they all had, like the game award pins, were a way of like identifying nominees? That's I a big. That's a. It's a, can, cons- yeah, a bit yeah, of a conspiracy theory. Well, everyone was wearing these pins, and I was I like, did, they I must did. have given those out at the event. And why have so on. many people like put them on already? I, I reckon that was like a security. It's not like stage they crashes. Had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, at times, like especially when Baldur's Gate won, like there's a few people getting up on stage. Um, anyhow, on the award winners, I, like Baldur's Gate three, whilst not my personal pick, it wasn't a game that like. I, I, i've spent any meaningful time with as of yet i would have much rather see like alan wake or probably alan wake to kind of get that um personally i think it's probably a deserving winner kind of given the um attention that it's received it didn't surprise me that it was a winner i was pleased to see alan wake 2 get best game direction that one i felt i was was really apt gonna say that like how does the fancy stoked as well how does alan wake get best game direction best narrative best art direction um but then not win game of the year like that's how it there? works though isn't it like i i feel but is like that like people feel like oh, this chat every i year. know but yeah. this year more than 
any any other like is it just that yeah people think oh well, we're giving alan wake all of these let's vote and- I think, I think like, that. for individual categories, right? Like, you're thinking of that particular element. Like, how well did it do that particular thing in comparison to all the others? Like, Zelda getting best action adventure, like, I think makes total sense. Because that is an action adventure game, like, through and through. Like, that is absolutely what that is. But for then Alan Wake, like, art yeah, direction, it, we're does, talking it does like... so many unique and distinct things in terms of its art, art design that that's also a fitting winner i don't know i get what you're saying i think it's like, like they're all in the it, same categories but you're judging it as like a sum yeah for of game of the year parts. yeah so it may not do like these individual things like the best but if it's getting like a second third place finish in each of them it's like averaging out to be the best but alan wake got the we've lost in all of them. nah nah that <laughs> makes total sense i'm sure someone listening to that I, will feel no, the same no. <laughs> it's subjective it's okay let's think of about it as like a like, mario kart about... grand prix <laughs> you don't need to win every ways to come out the overall winner in the end i wasn't listening i tuned I, I <laughs> oh my this. god <laughs> I just, 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 so disrespectful <laughs> i i would argue like Baldur's gate <laughs> as a game yeah is better than alan wake you just as said you weren't I happy loved, with it five so, minutes ago. Like, pick a Mario no, Kart lane. No, 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 I don't, <laughs> there are no lanes in Mario Kart. It's always changing. Yeah. <laughs> um, nah, but you, like... Uh, well, then it deserves it. I haven't I played it, you know, so you know I don't what? really... I don't, I don't have an opinion on it, on that. Like, I'm sure it, everyone as, loved it. As, as somebody who's played almost all of those games, like, I, I think the Baldur's Gate... Like obviously, I, I hate the last third, but I I think as a game, it just does a lot more mechanically than yeah. say Alan Wake does. It also like, has like about... cultural impact as well. Like, yeah, that game yeah. is fucking massive. Yeah, it does. I yeah, <laughs> yeah I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, like yeah, I think that's where like you're fair to cop Alan Wake too. Like it does just retread like mechanically speaking as a game as. It, like in terms of design, it just retreads a lot of familiar ground, um, oh, like especially no, but, with no, like no, RE4 no. in the category. So maybe there some as well. like It's just kind of you know a continuation of the survival horror genre. I think I, it does no, add I like think... an artistic layer to that, but yeah, like maybe Baldur's Gate three in terms of like player agency and stuff pushed things a bit further, and it, I think it deserves a lot of credit for that. I I would, but then I would actually argue that Baldur's Gate three plays a lot like the, the Divinity games, um, but like even I don't, down I, that's to the what extent I, that's, that that's like not... there's player freedom to just kind of yes, absolutely. I yeah, mean, not okay. like I mean, it's they're they're different games from different um like they have different development cycles and stuff. Yeah. What I, what I mean is is like I think about the like if you just if you boil these games down to like their core individual bits and stuff like I feel like Alan Wake the combat is a little bit samey especially in Alan's bits yeah. the puzzles yeah. are samey like there's a lot of stuff in that game that yes the narrative experience is like unlike anything else I don't think anyone's ever played but yeah. then Baldur's Gate like I think about it from like at a core gameplay level and for the most part it is like quite I guess what's the word robust like you can really do anything yeah um so yeah I don't know. It's well, hard. I'm sure we could be but here like, and, like, I think... for an hour talking about this, and we do have like. Do you have another point you wanted to make? I was just gonna say, like, I think that Kieran's right in that Baldur's Gate does have a lot of like cultural impact, and I mean that doesn't. I don't know if that necessarily means it's the better game, but like it, I think that that would have definitely influenced voting as well a lot. Mm. Like, I feel like people are like, oh, ha, huh, Starion is so funny. I love him, and then vote for Baldur's Gate. <laughs> do you know, like, because there are people like that. So many people, like, are just like, I love it so much. But they've played, like, two hours and just seen a star on. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that, yeah. that happens a lot. Um, And that's the other thing. Like, Alan Wake is such a... Now you're just making conceptually. crazy accusations. Like, no, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. Look, I'm sure we're going to talk about, like, you, Game of the yes, Year, like, okay. way more. We've got our own kind of Game of the Year. Me on. I'm getting played off announced. already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to, like, I do yeah, want to talk yeah. about some of the other games and some of the other categories. Um, I just want to touch on Spider-Man, like, not getting anything. It's kind of it's rough, that. but... I Jedi suppose Survivor there's always that. As well, you in? We would have come Jedi Survivor, not getting anything personal, favorite game, 
of mine Resident this year Evil as well. Getting nothing is that Resident is that Evil that? getting nothing? Yet a Tears of the Kingdom, which I think we all went into this year expecting to clean up, got one. Got action adventure, kind of nuts. Um, what what about yourself though, Kieran? Like stuff like best score in music, audio design, best performance. Were you pleased with the winners that emerged there, or any other categories? Yeah, I feel like all of those were were well deserved. Yeah. Um, I I was surprised to see Sea of Stars get best independent. I was really happy with it, um, but I I didn't think like above something like Cocoon or or Dredge that that would actually end up winning. So that was cool to see. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, don't I guess like avoided some of the controversy there as well. Had it had it gone to Jeff's like the inf- inflection on <laughs> listing those games out was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, like I think in in the like in the more specific in the more granular categories, everything seems to make sense. It was yeah. cool to see Pikmin Four take out best sim strategy as well. Yeah, very cool. And likewise, I was super pleased to see um, Wanda get best family game as well. I feel like that was a bit mm. of a lock. Um, yeah, that was but a, all the that same. Was definitely a given. Yeah. Um, what about best fighting game, James? I know that's a genre that's close to your heart. Were you, do you think Street Fighter Six was the deserving winner there? Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. I think it's hard. They're both so good. <laughs> I think it's definitely They're down both. to like <laughs> in Street the category Fighter of five. Six and Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I put yeah. I think they're both very good games. I think you mean Nickelodeon, right? That's uh... <laughs> no. I just, yeah, no, I don't. Um, I still play Mortal Kombat more, um, and that is my personal pick. Yeah. Um, but I think with the way Street Fighter does accessibility for new players, um, and the online implementation is really good, like very modern feeling. Like Mortal Kombat does kind of feel like the same game. Yeah. online wise as it did last two games so i think yeah i think that's deserving like i'm mm. happy for capcom to get like anything but like i think that they put so much like of like there's so much heart and soul in street fighter 6 like i think they definitely deserve it yeah absolutely shouting out another game that i really loved this year but not mentioned really at all in the awards was diablo 4 kind of missing out and it's was it its only nomination within the best multiplayer category um that was another award that went Baldur's gate three way um james i think you had some opinions on that as well how so on Baldur's gate three winning best multiplayer were you not oh uh, yeah i don't know like w- once again um let me just quickly i don't I just don't feel like what it's it deserves that award. Like I feel when you look at all those other games on that list, um, yeah. I don't know if that's another I mean, one. That maybe it is Street Fighter Six is nominated in Mario Bros. Wonder as well. It's such a delightful think, game to play multiplayer. Yeah, like and it's the multiplayer in Wonder. Like obviously you got the local, but the online is like so unique. Like yeah. that's the other thing to me is like um, for for Mario, I suppose for, the, for Mario. Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's just something new and and Street Fighter Six once again. But yeah. I guess with Street Fighter, that's a niche game. I don't think everyone would have played it. Um, once again, it comes down to that. I'm not saying it's a popularity contest, but I'm saying that's probably the game of those five that I would argue everyone's played. You know? Yeah. Um, I just yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just put too much thought into my votes, like too much. <laughs> like overthink. This I don't think is any such thing. You can you can put as much thought into them as you like. I I celebrate that. I respect that. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, before we move on to talk about the announcements from the event, um, I again want to shout out Steel Series uh, and these new alias mics that are fantastic for gamers like us who want professional sounding audio quality without a complex setup. It certainly helps make impromptu recordings like this all the more easier for us to do. So, big shout out to Steel Series. Um, as for the announcements of the day, though, there was plenty shannon what kind of stood out to you from the announcements and kind of i guess like how they were spaced out throughout the event as well um i think they were spaced out okay like it's so hard it felt like yeah there were definitely like um strings of like five to eight games that just felt not anywhere near the level of the other ones um but there was a lot there, like going through the list. Um, obviously, Jurassic Park, big fan of that, and I feel like yeah. I've been saying forever. 
um, that there's no dinosaur games when it, it, we know that Jurassic Park <laughs> and Jurassic World just does insane numbers. Have you actually um, been saying this? No dinosaur I, games? Maybe just to James. I feel like I've always said, like, why doesn't <laughs> Dino like Crisis been come in back? Your corner, like, like, why like, cheering for more <laughs> dinosaur Like, there's so many, like, why grounds. is there no Jurassic yeah. Park game? Like, there's no... There's no dino like Jurassic Park. I mean, in particular, like when that franchise has been awful for so long and still is yeah. driving a billion dollars in sales. Like, how is there not a game around that? I hear what um, you're saying, though. Heaps of Norse mythology games. Heaps of uh, I had a pirate games. Where are the dinosaur? Where's the dinosaur? People love, love? dinosaurs. People um, love I think dinosaurs. we're entering our like men in sci-fi suits shooting shit exactly. era. Exactly, yeah. and then dinosaurs true. like Based fucking yeah, exoprimal. Is both of those things mush together. Um, uh, that, and that's a classic. That's a modern classic. Underappreciated modern classic. <laughs> it's my turn with the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, maybe say something, right, and then we can discuss um, that. Dave the Diver in the Dredge DLC. That was in their pre-show, but really excited for that. I didn't expect them to to go in that direction with it. Um, so that's a really cool idea. Is well, Dave if- the Diver Australian? No. Dredge is not New like Zealand, the diver, but like the developers. Oh. I knew, uh, like, <laughs> I'm confused. And Dave just... is a very Aussie sounding name, to be fair. Oh, okay. I just, for some reason, in my head, it's an Australian game, but obviously it's not. I know it's funded by like. I don't yeah, think so. Somewhere. I don't really know if we know much about that. That's the problem. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm trying it's to think. Developer. There was so much. See, I've forgotten what about Prince about of Persia? The... I'd have thought that'd be close to your heart. Nah, not. Not, no, not nah. anymore. I'll leave that for someone <laughs> else. It is. It looks cool, but it's not the Prince of Persia I want. Um, sure. Sands of Time mm. remake. I would take over that, but that's wasn't it's anywhere on the to way. Be seen. Um, the God of War DLC was really cool. Um, Big yeah. War from House House was obviously really cool to to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were heaps more, but I'll save some for the rest. Going to this list, I'm excited us, yeah. again um, because there was genuine, genuinely a lot there and something for everyone. Yeah, I think. Look, I'll um, I'll shout out House House as well. I was just thinking about them the other day, like what they're gonna do following Untitled Goose Game, and we saw Big Walk get revealed. That's another trailer I need to go back and watch. I think to like kind of get my head around a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but they've earned the reputation now. I feel and like whatever they put out, however zany it looks, um, I'm gonna get on. I, I actually like first thought looking at the trailer that it was a pad upon game like the kind of look at the characters particularly in like a side profile i was like oh my god has like playstation given them the pad upon license um but i digress obviously i'm very excited about god of war dlc as well can't believe that's out n- tuesday like december 12th this year that's nuts and i think they confirmed that alan wake 2 is gonna get its new game plus mode on monday, monday. or tuesday as yeah. well like the same sort of time um and that's adding new story content to they hinted at as well so that's kind of nuts um this year just like refuses to slow down um but that's me for now james what what other announcements excited you uh, my big one is OD. Yeah. Um, which is oh, yeah. Kojima's game. I, um, like, I've, I'm playing Metal Gear Solid again at the moment, and I just play them, and I'm like, he's so stupid. But, like, he's not. <laughs> like, and then you, and, like, there's something to be said, like, that trailer is just three people speaking into a camera. But it's yeah. just, like, no one else in games can, like, pull you in like that, I feel. <laughs> I was um, looking at the reflections in their eyes. Me too. Like, I was to looking for. I was looking out. everywhere. I yeah. was trying to like, yeah, um, like, and like, we know nothing about it. And I do wait, raise my eyebrow a little bit because I think in one of the discussions afterwards, they were like, it definitely is a game, and I feel like if you have to kind of, yeah, clarify that, that scares me a bit. But um, I'm super keen for that. I think it's so intriguing. I think Kojima is has always been really good with breaking the fourth wall, um, and to do that, which I think is what he's going to be trying to do with like horror is like a really really cool idea mm. um i yeah i can't i just like such a simple trailer but so, so like captivating um, the jordan peele really involvement good. as well obviously really excites me like i'm yes. a big fan yeah of I, I think that's work. cool i i yeah i i know kojima loves hollywood but i don't know yeah. how yeah I, I i i hope it stays his thing and i'm sure it will yeah um, and obviously I don't he think... said he's working with other people too like that he can't talk about yet so i'm keen to see like what this whole project looks like because i kind of thought he's taken so many um pictures with like people you know in his studio and i will i kind of assumed they were going to be like npcs and death stranding but now i'm wondering if it's some kind of weird 
chapter like if overdose or od is this weird chapter based kind of vignette mm. kind of story mm. with each director i don't know but yeah it's it's cool i'm excited to see how that shakes out whatever it is yeah um i kind of hope it's something i like obviously super massive kind of featured in the list of announcements too with their dead by daylight kind of universe game i'm blanking on the name of it at the moment it's quite a long kind of so the casting one. of someone the, the casting of frank yeah. stone yeah, yeah. yeah. um I feel like they kind of made a point in that trailer, like describing it as a cinematic, what are they like a, a cinematic experience or something like that. They kind of described it as, which I feel like was just a way to kind of, um, uh, talk to dead by daylight players about like what a kind of super massive style of game is. Um, I don't think it'll be any different from a typical super massive game. Um, but I'm hope that's what we see from Kojima. Like if it is, you know, quote unquote, definitely a game. I hope it is like that kind of cinematic um, uh, storytelling. And it uses the cloud, um, but I don't really know. Yeah, that's like yeah, the like, like, yeah. How uh, does it use the cloud? Is there it, some sort yeah, of like, I'm just like synchronous sort of thing with other players in the way like Death Stranding did? I I don't mm. know, but uh, yeah, like I'm stoked to see him going back to like the horror genre. Um, obviously, having John Peel involved is really interesting. Um, I'm excited to see what that turns out to be uh kieran what about you any other games you want to shout out i'm just going through james's list and there's so much stuff i missed that i'm like holy yeah. shit <laughs> like that got announced um but I, I think like lost records the from the yeah. life of strange team i'm very excited to see how that turns out i mean it looks very much like in that same vein um yeah which i'm all for uh obviously the final fantasy 16 same... dlc oh yeah so, no 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 sorry final fantasy season dlc yeah, yeah yeah which is dropping today which is very exciting i'm keen to go yeah. and check that out um with another uh, one on the horizon right like one another one coming then... next year yeah yeah um very yeah i wasn't cool. expecting the jewel announcement like i was expecting one but that was yeah that was definitely interesting yeah um but uh hello games next game light no fire yeah uh, i know that the the meme already going around is like wait till you actually see how it turns out at launch but like yeah they've spent so long working on no man's sky and really course correcting and listening to the community and just expanding on expanding, expanding. Like mm. if this game launches like just fine at launch and then five years later, it's fucking amazing. I'll, I'll be happy. Um, and it already looks ridiculously ambitious. So yeah, yeah I'm keen to see where that goes. It feels like the natural evolution from No Man's Sky as well. Like, we, okay, we delivered this whole, like, you know, infinite universe kind of style of game, but we hear you that the actual planets themselves, like, didn't have a lot going on. Um, and mm. to their credit, as you said, they've added that over time. But I feel like the next thing is, okay, if we condense the down to one planet, like, what sort of real open world can we create there? Like, I love the idea that you know in typical open world games like yes it's a big expansive map but there's kind of an edge or like you come to the end of an island that kind of thing right but if it if it just kind of loops back on itself and it's spherical like a like a planet is like yeah that could be really really cool and um as sean murray said as well like i guess the true open world game um but yeah like you say i feel like everything we need to take with a pinch of salt um from them i guess kind of given how no man's sky launched but i'm sure they've learned from that as well and it wouldn't surprise me if this is a much more fully fledged experience at at launch mm. um you mentioned uh life is strange um a game kind of similar to that coming out from don't nod um i thought um i'm blanking on the name now i had it i'm scrolling up and down this list um usual j a uh, usual june um looks quite cool i love yeah. the art style of that game mm. i thought the combat kind of looked a little simple but I, I, the aesthetics and kind of tone of the game got me interested um and i'd be amiss not to shout out arcane leon and blade i am so about that i don't really have like any kind of connection to blade as a character but to kind of like hear of talk of like a mature single Just player game up. kind of with this marvel character and obviously yeah <laughs> arcane leon especially after death loop i've got a lot of time for um so really keen to see what that becomes i reckon that could be a little while away though that being said i think we've kind of covered everything that excited also, me also pony island too just quickly before i forget from the inscription devs oh yes looks i remember you calling that out super keen. time that's yeah i wouldn't sleep on that either if you um yeah i don't know 
I think um, Black Myth so Wukong good. as well. The yeah. more we see of that, the game just looks phenomenal. Um, I'm pleased to see that got like a hard release date for next year as well. Um, How... I think it was like August next year. How do we feel about the God of War stuff and PlayStation's switch up from, from games as a service to, to everything as to a roguelike. A roguelike now? To roguelike. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> the DLC announcements, like both of those, like Final Fantasy was obviously their announcement as well and God of War, like like both coming real soon or like now but very insubstantial yeah. like announcements of like what they're actually mm. what they actually involve yeah so i'm i'll be interested to see how that actually turns out and obviously it's going to be a, a a good litmus test for how people receive the last of us roguelike mode i guess yeah, yeah. do you think it is like um uh, some kind of like early work they had on a bigger thing that they've just kind of packaged up and I, shoved I in there. I thought that like, more with The Last of Us. Like, was the that a part was, yeah. of their, yeah, like online multiplayer? But they still thing. said that Factions is in progress, right? Like, it's. Yeah. No, I think it's probably just a way to, to like, have another marketing beat um, and yeah. also just get people playing the game again and making them feel like they've got their money worth and not trading it in or. Or whatever. Yeah. I think it's like I the games as a not... service model without it being games as a service. I think. Yeah, I suppose it's like an easy enough kind of looping mechanic to add in as well. You can get a good amount of game time out of like that sort of loop. Yeah, um, I hope there resources. is some kind of like story elements to it, or like yeah. some newness to the characters. Um, yeah, because that is a big part of it. Yeah. Of Speaking of imminent launches as well, I was keen to see the finals get announced to drop tonight. Um, I don't know if any of you played any of the finals when it was in testing, um, but I did and was pleasantly surprised with how much I enjoyed that game running with the squad. Um, so I will be playing some of that this weekend, I imagine. Um, but yeah, is that it? Is that all the games we wanted to shout out? No one else had any? Um, no, I'm going to butt in. Um, so... Nice. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, very nice. Um, I don't actually care about this, but I think it is a big deal. Um, I think Capcom announcing Monster Hunter, oh, um, of course, is like a. I mean, they closed. I don't know if it's a show closer. If I'm being honest, but um, mm. I I do think, uh, given I think it's still their best selling game like ever. Um, so and to, it's for one them of the best up, generally selling games franchises in Japan. I think I I don't know. Does it do well here? I don't Monster know. Monster Hunter World, World did like very 20 well. Million, I didn't it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Stupid. So like I feel like that shouldn't be slept on, but then I feel like a lot of games as well were 2025. Um which like I think is like fine, but I I can't help but wonder like I feel like Capcom has like at least four projects on the way and I fear that next year will not be a resident there will be no Resident Evil games next year, which really kind of bothers what will you me, do with but yourself? yeah, well yeah, I don't know how will I live? I'm going to have to I replay feel. everything again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um um, I think a lot of people are expecting that to be next year, like because of their earnings reports, and they, I think they said they had a game. I think there was like a miss. Yeah, I think that was Dragon's Dogma. I think they okay. um, miss. Yeah, mistranslated that or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, I do think that mon- that game does look different to other. Like, it feels like it looks a lot more fluid to Monster Hunter games, other ones. Yeah. So, um, I'm like kind of keen to see where that goes. Um, Long did, live the monsters. Did you, what did you guys think of Hellblade? Like the actual gameplay? Did you? I actually have feelings about this. It looked like I, <laughs> I, I have to like go back and go through it a bit more. But it definitely yeah, looked likewise. more actiony than I was expecting. Like yeah, more, I, like more violent and like, yeah. I'm wondering like where if they've pivoted to. I was saying like to Shannon, like have they pivoted to this kind of? Are they trying to make it like a big like kind of? god of war ep- style epic now where obviously mm. the first game was this kind of double a linear experience that told said a really it was going to be story. bigger though haven't they uh have, but like in what way like i feel like this, for, the, for a game that's once this, we say this about all xbox games for a game that's coming out like next year we still don't really know a lot and i feel like that combat especially um the trailer yeah like kieran was saying it looks a lot more action in I, I don't know if it's I, I, the I think, right vibe yeah. i i, I didn't the combat didn't strike me as being terribly different from the first. Mm. Um, but, like, I think to your point about the kind of size and scope of the game, like, I think this is going to be a much bigger, longer game than the first was. I- I'd hope they still approach the storytelling in the same sort of really quite cerebral way. Um, I-, I have little doubt that they were- that they do anything differently. But, um, yeah, I-, I didn't 
feel like had any kind of different vibes in terms just, of the combat. Watching, like I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be like as free flowing as um, God of War was. It was still going to be kind of like really quite zoomed in. I just, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that trailer, especially, I think there's one on the beach where they fight like a giant f- from a few years ago. Like that was that oh, excited me more than like yeah, this. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like, we didn't I, see like a big set piece in the same way here, I suppose. Yeah, and I don't yeah, want yeah. big set pieces necessarily, but like, I don't know. There's just something, I feel like there's something missing from this, but maybe I'm just being like. I think if it's going to be, uh, be a skeptical. bigger, longer game, like, you'll need to kind of break up that combat a little bit and stuff. Yeah, and true. Have it's more of those puzzle solving elements as well. It's going to be an interesting one. Like, I, I know, we, again, we say this about every Xbox game, but like, this was like what the first Series X game revealed, and it's been four years. Yeah, I feel years. like it was. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, you, you would say a pretty strong showing for Xbox, though, like throughout this, wouldn't you? But didn't wasn't it just that? I mean, Blade, was, I guess, as well. As well, I, I feel oh, yeah, like yeah. it's Blade again and OD, two plates <laughs> and OD. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do we know anything yeah, that's okay. coming for them next year? I feel like there's so many games in the works now. Like if you look at the slate, it is a, an exciting slate. But like stuff yeah. like Hellblade, I feel like should be out, or I feel like it should be out. I think. Yeah. Was Exoborn specifically a Xbox no. title as well? No, no that was multi. No. Yeah, okay. It's not the hit they need either. But I um. Well, um, yeah, <laughs> that one's know, very much on like. Do you know what single. else looks really cool? Really cool. Um, that I kind of wasn't expecting was um wind, wind no. blown. Wind blown looks cool. The, um, so it's like a the Missed new game one. from the Dead Cells people. It's like the cartoony one where like they were all attacking like a something and they kept. It's like a gory cartoony three player Dead Cells game. Oh, right. It's, dead. it's from the people who made Dead Cells. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that might have been skipped. It might have, like, fallen behind, like underneath everything else. But, yeah, that looks like a really solid, fun, action-esque yeah. game. So, uh, that's I just like that it's, like, super cartoony and cutesy. We and it's super sharp, but it's also, like, ridic- like, violent. Like, people's heads get cut off and split in half and shit. Like, it looks quite fun. There were some really cool art styles. I quite liked um, the first Berserker um, Kazan as well. I thought the art style of that. There was lots of like, even the Dragon Ball Z one kind of had like these cell shaded kind of cartoony character models in rather realistic environments. And I quite like mm. that visual style. Um, yeah, nice. I thought Rise of the Ronin continues to just like confuse me just given that like it's a playstation exclusive taking place in ancient japan like it just kind of feels like that should fall into a ghost of tsushima style universe now but it's like i think it's, a different it's almost very sekiro though. and like yeah. as well like it's kind of it's i think we'll be close so to many Se- ancient japan heroes and neo to yeah. then say ghost of tsushima which like yeah. but once again i guess the context two, of a playstation exclusive though it's just a little yeah little it odd. is a weird choice to for them to pick up i agree yeah um, um just on that i am surprised we didn't i, I thought we'd see the ghost to or get it like a, a year or something for death strand yeah too. um and i'm surprised we didn't get either of those things playstation had a good smattering of stuff but oh, again there's not a lot for next year oh, Wolverine. yeah i do feel like it just in terms of like where the announcements landed like i i get that monster hunter you know has its fan base but i sort of feel like the kojima announcement kind of back ending the show before going into the game of the year award like it always has to end with the game of the year award i get that but i feel like i needed a bigger announcement kind of in the the run up there felt like we had lots of big announcements kind of early on in the show and it started to peter out yeah but maybe that's just down to my personal preference no i agree given it was 2025 and i think james said you said we were going to hear more in a year like it just felt odd um, yeah to end it like that um, yeah also just not a lot of 2024 games like i still feel like next year looks a little light on seems like 2025 is going to be pretty stacked but um yeah yeah I, st- I still don't feel like we've got a good feel of like what's happening in the latter half of next year but maybe no. that's what summer game fest is for and jeff keely will be back with more announcements uh but uh, with- Chris, one more thing one more thing yep. it's really small but i just want to ask to no, see one did anyone play Outlast Trials on PC when it came no. out last year? Yeah, I'd be down like to though. Do like, you want to play it together? It's James? like a, yeah, should we? Play uh, it? No, not at all. But like I, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we can't. They had obviously announced it for consoles. I'm excited about that. Um, I don't, I don't f- like sitting at my desk on my computer playing horror games. Like that's not scary. It's scary to have to sit at my desk. But like being able to play it on my TV, like on my couch, is really exciting. And I've heard it's really good. So I'm keen. That's coming out in March, obviously. Um, just thought I'd it, shout that out. It's gory as all hell. But, um, 
Well, yeah. Have you played the first two Outlasts? They're fucked. I, yeah, I, I enough yeah. of them before like, I was like, I, first of you? I'm trying Outlast to hold them two, meal down. It? Or Outlast it was or my something. first press start review, so yeah. it will always hold a special yeah, place in my it. heart. Brought me to all of you. So very, I was not begging. <laughs> that is not true. And yeah. with that, let's bring an end to what was this bonus episode of the Press Start Podcast. We will be back next week at the with your regular programming, kind of that midweek episode. Um, once again, thank you to Steel Series for bringing you the podcast today with our new range of alias microphones. You can subscribe to us on Listener or the podcast service of your choice. Follow us at Press Start AU and visit the site at pressstart.com.au. We've been joined today by Shannon. Yes, you can follow me at Shannon Grixty. Kieran? Yeah, uh, follow me at Hash Brown on X. And James? Yes, you can find me at James on X. A T J M Z. <laughs> and I've been your host, Ewan Roxbury. You can follow me on socials at Ewan underscore Roxbury. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.